get ready to laugh with the best of season three, Topic Thunder. With your host, Heather McDonald. Gotham Comedy Live's best of season three is all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Heather McDonald. Hey guys, I'm Heather McDonald. Thanks for joining us for Best of Gotham Comedy Live Topic Thunder. Tonight, we'll take a look at some of the funniest comics in the nation talking about topics that are near and dear to their hearts. One thing that comedians love to talk about more than anything are awkward situations that they've either witnessed, created, or been a part of. Everyone has experienced an awkward moment at one point or another. Like that time when you really liked that guy, so you decided to drive by his house, but it was too late before you realized that he lived in the cul-de-sac and he and his friends were playing basketball in the driveway, laughing at you, so you quickly tried to do a three-point turn and then accidentally killed his cat? Who hasn't done that? So, let's kick off this show with our comedians talking about awkward situations. I went to this gay bar called Woody's to be supportive of a gay friend of mine, and while I was there, a man grabbed my butt and winked at me. <laughs> but then, I started to feel kind of special. No one's ever grabbed my butt like that before. <laughs> but then, a few moments later, I saw the same man grab another guy's butt. <laughs> I was devastated. <laughs> I'm not gay. I didn't want to be with him. I just didn't want him to be with anybody else. <laughs> I don't care how sexy and cool you are. You go to the hospital, doctors erase that shit immediately. <laughs> you just sick. Went to the doc hospital, it was like, take all your clothes off, take that stupid hat off, take your underwear off, and put on these two cooking aprons. <laughs> That's basically what they wore, like one in the front, one in the back, and your dick and balls are just swinging around. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> but don't be too uncomfortable. It's like three or four other guys with their balls out, so it's like a little party. Um, <laughs> minus the cold cut sandwiches in the middle of the room. For everybody to eat with their balls out. Oh, this is delicious. What's, what kind of meat is this? I don't know. <laughs> she said, once you finish that, you can go over and sit in that cubby hole and we're gonna take your blood pressure and give you a water IV. But as she was telling me this, there was this old dude getting up from getting his blood pressure taken with his balls and asshole out. And I'm like, lady, you want me to sit in that same chair that he was sitting in? Y'all don't got another chair? Everybody's hygiene is different. How many open assholes been in that chair? Since before I got here, it's five o'clock now. What time y'all start these procedures? 47 assholes in that chair. You want me to sit in that shit? I ain't got no rip away paper or nothing. Same chair. She got upset. She's like, can we get another chair? Apparently this guy's asshole is special. Yeah, I was the first white girl on Def Comedy Jam. And uh, Cedric the Entertainer was my host. Very, very sweet guy, but he was really nervous to bring me out. Best introduction I think I ever got. All right, y'all. <laughs> Y'all enjoying the show so far? All right, yes you are. Now listen up. I want y'all for your next performer just to keep an open mind. We all dreaming of big cock, not me. It's not too much fun. I remember the first time I put my dick in a girl's hand, she said, Jackie, you know I don't get high. <laughs> I was on the high school football team. The coach never played me, but made me take a shower anyway. She said it was good for the team's morale. I was, uh, I was listening to the radio the other day. You know, I realized there's a lot of songs out there about like uh, catching somebody who cheated on you, you know? But they don't make any songs about like thinking that you caught somebody and then confronting them, <laughs> but then like being wrong about it, you know? Just having to stand there like an idiot while she explains to you where she was and it like makes sense, you know? You ever hear that Whitney Houston song? She's like, Friday night, you and your boys went out to eat, but only two of you had dinner. I found the credit card receipt. Okay, but what if the guy in that song is like, that's because we split the bill three ways and then Tommy gave me cash and then I used my credit card for the two of us. You, you psychopath, what is, what is you? Would you pick through my garbage again? Like when, I thought you were gonna stop picking through my garbage. She's like, whoops, sorry. Sorry, I'll just go to bed. My fault. Uh, there aren't that many old people here, which is uh, good, I think. I, I fucking hate old people. 
All right, I don't hate old people. Like, all my grandparents died when I was younger, so I'm really uncomfortable around older people. Like, I don't know what to talk about. Uh, I live next to this old guy now, and we're both on the front porch. I want to make, like, pleasant conversations with this guy, be a good neighbor, but I have no idea what to say whatsoever. So I'm just, like, standing there, staring off into the distance, like, so... <laughs> Heaven sounds like it's going to be cool. <laughs> Probably got a bunch of pets waiting for you up there, and maybe get your real hips back. <laughs> I didn't read the Bible. I'm not sure how it works, so. Losing my virginity was a lot like the Holocaust. <laughs> it never happened. You guys are in a good mood tonight. I'm a little weirded out, man. I received a half-assed compliment today and didn't realize it until it was too late. <laughs> Testify if you understand what I'm talking about. This woman with her boyfriend sees me walking down the street and she goes, oh my God, babe, babe, doesn't he look just like Vin Diesel? <laughs> I'm thinking that's a compliment, right? So I held in my stomach for that shit, right? I'm like, <laughs> I said, you keep on talking like that, you're gonna get pregnant in front of your boyfriend. <laughs> she said, no, 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 let me finish. You look like Vin Diesel, but with cerebral palsy. <laughs> Who says that? I'm such an asshole, I said thank you again, because I don't know what cerebral palsy was. <laughs> I'm sorry, I Google that shit. That is not a compliment. That shit is offensive and inappropriate. I've been engaged a chunk of times. I've been engaged a few times. First time I got engaged is because the guy asked me in front of people. You guys missed that. In front of people is what I said. That's why I had to, because I'm not a dick. And I really need a dental. <laughs> Yeah, he, uh, he's romantic and he proposed to me in a bar. And because I've got that gaping hole six inches below my belly button that gives me feelings and emotions I did not want or ask for, I started to cry. But the bartender looked over at like the wrong moment and she thought he hit me. So you just hear from across the bar, what did he do to you? And without even skipping a beat, I just ran up and I'm like, no, 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 it's okay. He loves me. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV with the best of season three, Topic Thunder. Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live's the best of season three, Topic Thunder. Welcome back. And thanks for sticking around for best of Gotham Comedy Live, Topic Thunder. Now let's admit it. Most of us have some bad habits. I like to go into a frozen yogurt shop and have six to 18 samples and never buy any yogurt. That's just me, but I'm thrifty like that. Let's watch as these next Gotham comedians talk about bad habits. Smoke cigarettes and I'm trying to quit, otherwise I'm gonna get cancer, right? Anybody quit smoking cigarettes in here, by the way? You quit? How long did you smoke before you quit? A couple years. Oh, you could smoke some more and shit. <laughs> I want to quit, man. I don't know how cold turkey doesn't work. I want to try Chantex. I saw the commercials, but when I Googled it, Chantex was worse than fucking cigarettes. You ever see the side effects of Chantex? Hostility, vomiting, suicidal thoughts. <laughs> suicidal thoughts? <laughs> I think I'm gonna die of cancer in several years. I'm gonna jump off a damn roof in two weeks on Chantex. I could be on the ground, smoking. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yo, don't jump. You got your whole life ahead of you. Come on down, have a smoke. You live longer. You still gonna die, but just not now. <laughs> these cigarette commercials annoy me, man. You ever see these graphic cigarette commercials? They try to help you quit, but they, they try to scare you into quitting. They show you these deformed people. This one guy, he got a hole in his neck, and he can't swim for some reason. <laughs> and he's cleaning it with a swab. <laughs> I can never swim again. I'm like, oh, that's fucked up, sir. <laughs> that's what happens? I thought it was just cancer. Swimming too? <laughs> Shit. And you try to rationalize, I ain't been in the pool in seven years. I don't <laughs> And the lady comes on, she had her fingers amputated. Like, oh my God, I need my fingers to smoke. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this one this TV commercial about cigarette quitting smoking, and it was these guys testifying about how they quit smoking, right? And this one guy was like, I quit smoking because a doctor told me how bad my health was getting. I was like, all right, that makes sense. Second guy was like, I quit smoking because I want to see my kids grow up. I'm like, okay, that make more sense. Third guy was weird. He was like, exercise. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, instead of smoking cigarettes, I just exercise. I'm like, really, asshole? Maybe you shouldn't be in this fucking commercial. Because your cure is dumb. Exercise, really? Listen, 
quitting smoking is one of the hardest things you ever do in your life, okay? And for some people, so is exercise. <laughs> so you can't cure something that's hard to quit, but something that's even more challenging to do. Doesn't make any sense. I used to be an alcoholic, but now instead of drinking a bottle of Jack, I study quantum physics and it helps out a lot. <laughs> Same shit. Bad habits are terrible, man. I pick up a lot of bad habits when I move to New York. My mom didn't want me to move to New York because it's bad habits. Like, you, you're gonna pick up bad habits and you're gonna get stabbed and raped. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm going to New York, not prison, relax. <laughs> I might pick up some bad habits. I might even get stabbed, but I seriously doubt somebody's gonna fuck me up their ass against my will. <laughs> I got a pretty strong will. <laughs> I'm not an athlete, you know? I'm, I'm envious of the Olympi Olympians. I just can't do it, you know? In, in college, I did a little wrestling. Of course, now they call it date rape, whatever, but I... Uh, <laughs> I like to play tennis on grass because I hit the ball better when I'm high. And uh, I also love when it snows because you get to see who are the committed smokers here in New York City. Because if you're willing to get hypothermia with your emphysema, you are on a mission. I only smoke after sex, so I haven't had a cigarette in 11 years. But if I did, I, uh, my sister smokes, but only when she drinks. And we're very proud of her because she's down to two kegs a day, doing very well. And I'm a hypocrite because I occasionally smoke marijuana every single day. And... <laughs> Here's a tip. If you're ever smoking pot, don't eat pretzels because your saliva will cease to exist. Trust me. You will be hacking up tumbleweeds. And if you smoke pot, drink Red Bull Cola because that way you're stupid, but you're alert, which is a good thing for when the cops pull you over for doing three miles an hour in the high speed lane. Who thinks they should legalize pot by applause? Anybody? Yes, right? Absolutely. Because you could, you could tax it and then balance the budget in a week, right? Because a lot of people smoke pot and you're drinking. I see it in your eyes. You're going to get violent later. It happens, right? You get violent when you drink. And if you do hard drugs, you knock over convenience stores and you mug people, the only thing you attack with marijuana is a Rice Krispie treat. Really, let's be honest. Sure, marijuana will make you laugh at your grandmother falling down the stairs. But heroin will make you push your grandmother down the stairs. And crack will make you rob her when she lands at the bottom. And meth might make you grab Nana's titty. That's a bad one. I, uh, I've never done it. That's just what I hear. When I was a kid, everybody smoked pot. My role models were Cheech and Chong. Remember them? Scooby-Doo, tell me they weren't all high as a kite. Four hippies driving around in a van called the Mystery Machine, hallucinating that they see ghosts. They had long conversations with a dog, and they always had the munchies. Cut the shit. The dog's middle name was Doobie. Am I the only one that figured this shit out? Has anyone here ever tried to do uh, cocaine through a crazy straw before? I thought I was gonna give myself a stroke trying to get around that third loop in the thing right there. It's like... Straight to the floor. Spooning the dog. And then the next day my nephew's like, Uncle Jason, this chocolate milk is making my mouth numb. I'm like, let's get you something else to drink, okay? Uncle Jason's gonna finish that chocolate milk. That shit's really expensive. <laughs> you know, and hey, alcohol's good, but uh, weed is good too. <laughs> only, only problem is, they don't want you to smoke. You know, uh, see, you know why? See, they, you can drink, but you can't smoke because weed make you think. <laughs> make you start analyzing shit, you know? Yeah, alcohol don't do that. Alcohol just make you. Aah! <laughs> you ever see somebody fucked up? <laughs> they can't even talk. You all right? <laughs> then they walk away like they said something. <laughs> see, weed makes you analyze shit. Makes you think, right? When you smoke, you. be making more money than I'm making. <laughs> Minimum wage is bullshit. <laughs> I think you should smoke weed before any major decision in your life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just to keep you from making a mistake. You know, like, hey, you wanna get married? Wait a second.
no. I always look at what people are drinking. It's a habit of mine. You know what I mean? It tells what kind of night they're going to have. You see someone drinking like whiskey or tequila, don't you think, oh my God, that person's in for a fucked up night. <laughs> they're open to new ideas. You see someone drinking cranberry juice, don't you think, oh my God, that person was down for anything last night. <laughs> Tonight they're fighting a urinary tract infection. <laughs> I feel like some people took that shit personally. <laughs> it's not funny, asshole, it burns. <laughs> Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV with the best of season three, Topic Thunder. Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live's The Best of Season 3, Topic Thunder. Oh, hello again. I hope you're enjoying the show tonight. Next, we're going to hear our Gotham comedians talk about a game that's even more dangerous than the Hunger Games. That's right. I'm talking about the dating game, which apparently now, in order to be competitive, you have to take a picture of your vagina and sext it to the guy that you just met on the internet an hour ago. Yeah, that's what you have to do. At least that's what I heard. Here's what our next comics had to say about the torture involved with being in the dating game. Yeah, the girl I'm seeing now, uh, she's uh, eight years younger than me. She's 23, I'm 31. And a friend of mine made a big deal about it. And he was like, how do you relate to somebody in their early 20s? But he's white, he's dating an Asian girl. I don't know. It seems a lot harder to relate to. At least at some point in my life, I was 23. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, if she was ever like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I'd be like, yeah, I remember that feeling. If she was ever like, I was on the subway, everybody thought I was a ninja. I'd be like, I don't know what to tell you. It's not happening to me. Mm. Here's another beauty of being older. You have wisdom, man, because I see a lot of young people in the crowd, and you, you, you got to listen to this, especially the young guys, young girls too. You always think when you're young that you need to be with a 10, right? Like, oh, I got to get a 10. I need to be with a 10. No, you don't, okay? I've been married for eight years. You know what you need? You need someone who's beneath you in every category, right? Yes, because if you're a nine and they're a one, you know what you get? Freedom. Yeah. yeah. You could do whatever the hell you want if you're the nine. She'll try to stop you at first. She'll be like, hey, I don't think you should go on that long golf trip. Like, Shut up, one, and you just walk out the door. Right? Next day, you're hitting golf balls at your friends. You're not even thinking about her. Like, Can you believe she tried to stop me from coming out here? Shit, that's going towards the hole. And I think it explains why John Lennon's second wife was Yoko Ono. Think about it. His first wife was probably a gorgeous model, right? And at some point he was like, I can't fucking take her anymore. This girl's all up in my shit. Right? And he got rid of her. And then he met Yoko Ono, a negative six. No. Uh -huh. Uh, see, I, I didn't take my own advice, okay? I've been married eight years to a woman who is smarter than me, better looking than me, and makes more money than me. Yeah. I can't get away with shit, okay? <laughs> my wife installed a, a, a webcam in my dick hole a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's watching right now. It's going well, they're really a good crowd. They seem to like me so far. <laughs> and all her friends are really rich too, man. And uh, one of her friends makes like four or five hundred thousand a year, right? And his wife is like a stay-at-home mom. Now, I don't know if you've ever watched a couple where one person makes all the money and the other person doesn't really make any money. The way they interact, totally different than the way my wife and I interact. This guy was like spur of the moment. It's like five of one on a Sunday during the football season. I'm at his house. He's like, shit, Joe, football. Let's go. Me and you. We drive to Philly. We eat some cheesesteaks, roast pork sandwiches. We watch football for like six hours. Honey, watch the kids while we're gone and we'll be back in about seven hours. Have a nice dinner ready for us, all right? See you later. And he just walks out the door. Now, I'm standing there in front of my wife, like... Am I allowed to go with him? Because... I would love to go if I could go with him. She didn't let me go. She didn't let me go. I had to rub her feet for, like, 20 minutes. So I'm single. Weird, right? I understand the opposite sex so well. I think my taste had changed a little bit, you know what I mean? Like when I was a younger dude, if I saw a pretty girl, I had to speak to her. Now I'm older, I know better. I see a pretty girl and I'm like, ugh, that looks like a lot of work. <laughs> it's gonna be phone calls, conversations, activities. I don't wanna do any of that shit. I see a girl in a wheelchair, I'm like, that looks like an awesome relationship. 
she is never gonna want to go hiking and biking. I bet she loves video games. Really? Don't judge me, all right? I would date a handicapped girl, and not just for the parking. I'd do it for other reasons. I'd mostly do it because they can't run away from you. That's a huge perk, huh? <laughs> is there anything more frustrating than when a woman says some fucked up shit and leaves the room? If you're dating a handicapped girl, she says some fucked up shit, she goes to leave. You could be like, whoa! <laughs> I'm just going to put on your parking brake for a second. Hard to have confidence, a single man, uh, just when you take into account every other guy who's single. Like George Clooney, he's single. That doesn't seem fair. Um, that we're just allowed to hit on the exact same women. I mean, he lives in a multi-billion dollar home in Italy with no roommates. And I live in Queens with a guy named Mad Dog. Bubbles. Bubbles. <laughs> But there's no law. He could come down to Starbucks, take away my favorite barista. He'd go to a bar, have anybody. He'd go to my house, take my mom away. <laughs> Make a movie about it called Abducted by Love. And I'll go see him, be like, it's pretty good. He's a great actor. He's excellent in it. He's very good. <laughs> it's, fun. it's fun. Yeah, I don't know. That's why, like, being single is more like sports. We have clear, defined leagues. Like... You're six foot two, you make good money, you have health insurance. You really shouldn't be allowed to on the cashier at Target. Those are my people, and you stay off my land. That's what it is. This is like insane. I was on a date with a girl. I, I liked her so much. I remember, like, I was crazy about her. And, I, and I, I remember I cleaned the inside of my car. I was younger. It was crazy. That's a big deal. And so we get in the car, and I'm like, and I'm, and I'm just, she's locked in. She's buying all my lies. I'm talking, I'm lying about, it's, you know, that's what you do. And you, you guys are like, I, I know, yeah, I'm friends with Bradley Cooper. We'll meet. <laughs> anyway, so, it's bad. But anyway, so I'm, <laughs> so I'm, and I, and I, you know, guys grab the wheel like this. I drive so you can see the belly of the whale. Look at that. <laughs> Whatever. So. So I get in a car, man, and there's a bee in my car. And, and I, I like this girl so much. I was calling her game over. I was like, game over. She said, what's that mean? I go, it's game over. You're the girl from me. Everybody else is a blur. You're the girl. She's like, you're crazy. I'm like, yeah, crazy about you. <laughs> I sad. I was young. So anyway, this bee's in my car. And I'm not, it's, but to be fair, it wasn't like a bee, like a honey bee, like, I mean, honey, mm, like that. No. It was one of those bees with the extra long abdomen. You know, the ones with the fur and the red wings with the, because a bee stings you and they're like, out and they die. Mm, and then you no problem. But some bees, this is the kind that the queen sends out to sting a man for his sins. You know, those ones, they live underground, not even part of the ecosystem. It's got, had feathers. It was like that big. It was, but they got like 50 stingers. They, they bite here and they hum sting you like that. Your face melts, it sucks. And so, so uh, this bee flies up and my girl, my girl, and you gotta understand, you gotta understand, I was raised by a Sicilian mother. My mother always told me, she's from Brooklyn, she always said, you, you always hold the door, you, always, you are her shield, you protect the woman. I don't care if there's a rogue bull or a loose lion. You stand, and, I, and, I, and I am that way, I don't care. You date me, you need to know. I, hope, if, I always say to girls, I hope you're in the hard love making, a lot of money, and having a human shield, because I, 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 use, my, I use my elbows when I fight, I don't use my hands, because I need these for music and love making. I know, I, I play the harp, don't worry about it. So we get in the car and this bee flies up and it's just looking at both of us. It's like, and this is when, and I remember it was, I knew it was gonna sting somebody. I swear to God, it was like this. Like, and my girl looks at me and she goes, oh my God, please help me. I'm so allergic, I'm so allergic. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> allergic, you know? And this is when you gotta be a man. I remember this split second time and she's looking up at me with these baby blues and I just took my hand. I was just like, Aah. And I just, I opened my door, I was like, Aah. and the bee was about to land. And she's looking at me and I was just looking, I was like, Aah. and I just, I walk in and left her in that car. <laughs> I know, I know, I didn't, I didn't get laid, but I didn't get stung, see. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV with the best of season three, Topic Thunder. Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live's The Best of Season 3, Topic Thunder. Welcome back to Best of Gotham Comedy Live, Topic Thunder. Before the break, we watched our comedians talking about the trials and tribulations of the dating game. If you're lucky enough to find the right person, or the wrong one with extremely sticky sperm, then oftentimes the next step is having kids. Let's see what these next comedians have to say about their families. 
This is my first time uh, on the road. I got a two-year-old baby at home. Me and my wife, this is the first time we traveled without the baby. And it is awesome. <laughs> O-M fucking God. Amazing. I slept until 10.30 today. Do you know what? That's lunchtime in high school. Do you know what 10.30? What? 10.30? Then I took a nap. Then we had sex. My wife and I had sex for 16 seconds in a row. In a row. I didn't even take a break, nothing. And I had an orange Gatorade on the nightstand. I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna treat myself at the end of this marathon. My poor wife. A lot of comics will come on stage and tell you they have really giant penises and they have sex for like three days straight. And I'm not, I'm not one of them. I have a very small penis, but the good news is I don't take up a lot of your time. 16 seconds in a row. When you have kids, sex the way you used to do it, just throw it out the window. You know, no longer. You're not spanking each other. There's no more fish hooks, donkey punches. You're not, you're not pulling hair, spitting in each other's mouths. None of that stuff. Remember the old days, your, your girlfriend would be on the bottom and she's got you in a chokehold and you're like, holy shit, daddy issues. All right. Gone. That's all out. You can't do any positions when you have kids. You can't. You can't do doggy style, cowgirl, reverse, I don't know what they're called. Missionary, you can't do any positions because someone's asshole is facing the door at all times. And you don't want your toddler walking into that Morse code. Leave the room. Leave dot dot dash dot dash dash dot. Leave the room. Dash dash dot. Leave the room. I have two little boys at home. I think they're really stupid, right? I was in a taxi with them today, and the taxi driver was wearing a turban, and my little one turns to me and he says, Mama, why is a genie driving the taxi? <laughs> and you do things to try to make them more intelligent, right? We've got the shower curtain with the periodic table on it, right? <laughs> and the placemats with the body parts, right? The little one looks at the placemat, he looks at me and he says, Mama, Where's your big penis? I'm like, it's in the top left-hand drawer, if you really must know. He is so cute. He is like the cutest kid you've ever seen. You know how like you want like one kid better? He is so cute. He, oh my God, he says to me the other day, he goes, Mama, when I grow up, if I have a little baby, does that mean you're going to be a grandma? I'm like, yes, that's so cute, that's what it means. And then his older brother, who's a little bit of a smarty pants, like he refers to me as his birth mother, he says, <laughs> Mama, when I grow up, if I don't have a baby, does that mean you're just gonna be an old lady? <laughs> and I said, yes. And instinct tells me, with that level of charm, you're going to be my roommate. I live in Brooklyn with my girlfriend. That's right, I have a girlfriend. We're in a pretty serious relationship. Uh, we are married. Uh, yeah. I think this might be the one. You never know. It's a big commitment, marriage. My wife is awesome. She is a doctor, so laugh. Don't laugh. I don't care. I don't need your money. Uh, yeah, I'm not paying rent. Come on. Yeah. My wife proposed to me, which is a little non-traditional. She did. She ended up proposing to me. It was incredibly romantic. She came up to me one night and she was like, oh, I'm pregnant. I was like, oh. <laughs> I do. I do. I never thought you'd ask. Marriage is difficult. I just found out my parents are getting divorced at the age of 60, which at first is very sad, and then it's absolutely hilarious. Because when you get divorced at 25 or 35, it's like, you know what, maybe we got married too young. Maybe we should go our own ways and live the lives we were meant to live, be truly happy. When you get divorced at 60, it's like, I'd rather die alone. <laughs> so we had a baby, uh, my wife and I had a baby two years ago. We had a girl, and uh, thank you, thank you. We, uh, uh, well, uh, we wanted a boy, um, so we are raising her gay. Uh, that's the boy Fear, that's all. We were just afraid to have a girl, because you got to worry about a girl. you got to worry about a girl, and not even for the girl. you got to worry about a girl because of creepy dudes. There's creepy dudes everywhere. We've seen some on the stage tonight. There's creepy dudes everywhere <laughs> that want to do creepy things to your beautiful daughter. So my wife and I, we've talked it over. We've come up with a plan to keep our daughter safe. We're not going to potty train her. <laughs> Ever. Guess who's coming home early from the prom? The girl just took a deuce in her dungarees. That's Sue, safety first. I'm a parent, I got a baby. We named him Blue Ivy. We named him Blue Ivy. 
come on, that's not his name. We wanted to give him a name that, that told other children he liked children, so we named him Sandusky. And, uh, uh, whoa, I didn't know this was an alumni show. Oh my God, whoa. My kid's cute, his name is Lincoln. He's a cute kid, but I feel self-conscious talking about him because I feel like people lie about their babies. You know what I mean? Like whenever somebody has a baby, they give you the same bullshit phone call. They're like, oh, you gotta see this cutest baby in the world. Oh my God, it's so cute. But who do you believe? Because everybody says that, but there are a lot of ugly babies out there, man. But you never get that call. You never call the hospital like, oh my God, it's a baby. How is it? Dude, don't even come. <laughs> this thing is fucking disgusting. Uh, apparently our sister's been having an affair with a gremlin the last three months. Don't put water on it. There'll be like eight million of them running around the hospital right now. Just not, it's a mess. I blame Facebook for the ugly baby epidemic, I do, because Facebook needs a don't like button. Do you understand? It needs a don't like button because right now nothing has integrity on Facebook. You like it or you ignore it. There's no way to tell people that what they're doing is fucked up. You know what I mean? You know when you're scrolling through the feed on a Saturday morning, you haven't even had your coffee yet and you see that kid, that ugly kid, that kind of like, oh, fuck, you know what I mean? All it would take is like three don't likes and they would never post that shit again. And if you didn't laugh at that, your kids are ugly, okay? My, uh, my mom, uh, Joanne, she's a beautician. And uh, she was talking to me because there's, uh, there's a lot of interracial couples on television now. And she was like, uh, I don't know. I just think, you know, blacks should be with blacks, whites should be with whites. And I was like, that's pretty fucked up. <laughs> okay. And then she was like, no, 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 like, whoever you love, you love. That's a beautiful thing. It's just that black people, their hair is really tough. And then it's going to ruin our good hair, and I got to cut it. <laughs> so that's where my mom's at. <laughs> She's a hairdresser first, human being second. It's, yep, it's down. The wife says, get out, get the, get the fuck out. As her husband's walking out the door, she says, I hope you die a slow, painful death. He says, so now you want me to stay? I have two kids, man. I have, I have a six-year-old and a one-year-old, and oh my God. It, the best part about being a parent is it becomes really easy to have a good time once you have kids. All you have to do is just not be with your kids. <laughs> right, parents? Right? Yeah, you just walk out your front door. You're like, are we in the Bahamas? I don't know. <laughs> no, we're just on the front porch. Oh, it feels fucking great. I don't know. <laughs> and there's also a lot of acting involved in being a parent. A lot of pretending you give a shit. Like, I could be nominated for an Oscar for some of my performances. Yeah, the category be, and the nominees for best giving a shit. In a non-giving a shit situation. Luke's father, Joe, for saying, yeah, that really is a cool leaf. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV with the best of season three, Topic Thunder. Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live, the best of season three, Topic Thunder. Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live, Topic Thunder. Unfortunately, we are on the final part of the show, but we saved some of the best for last. We're all getting older, except for me. I made a deal with God. I'm his favorite. So don't be jealous. So the last segment of the show involves the struggles that come with getting older. Enjoy. You want an older woman? I want an older, I love kind of, I love older women. Older women, we love you. Thank you. Older women are sexy as hell. I went to older women's strip club. In Atlanta, I swear, they just did it like this all night. Like that. that was the most action, double up. It was popping their hip out. Pop out. It was great, it was great. I loved it. I loved it. Older women could be sexy without being sexy. Without, they could say sexy and use fruit. You know, the bread is in the oven and the butter's warm. Huh? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> you don't know if she's talking sex or food. The peaches are wet. Hello? Hello? <laughs> she hang up the phone, you feel violated. What happened? I uh, recently had quite a significant birthday. Just turned 21, thank you. And, um, <laughs> no. Um, no, I just, I just turned 30. <laughs> Three years ago, and, um... <laughs> I am 33, I'm nearly 34, I'm dying is what I'm saying. I am gently dying every day and they can't tell me how long I've got. And when you are hurtling towards the great nothingness, you start to prioritise, you know, the bucket list and other Morgan Freeman films. And... <laughs> so I've started doing things that I've never done before. So I moved to London uh, last year and uh, I thought I would try online dating, never done that before. I did it for six months and in the whole time I went on one date. He turned up half an hour late and lied about his age by 10 years. <laughs> yeah, he said he was 21, he was 11. I'm like... Realize something too, man. I can't do that stuff neither because 
as I said, I'm getting older. And I don't say I'm getting older because my age. Your age don't make you old. You know what let you know when you get older? Your body. <laughs> yes. Like this morning when I woke up, the first thing I needed was a nap. That's how you know. <laughs> Man, it's waking up and wearing me out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to take it down. I got, oh. I got a 45 minute snooze button. I ain't playing. <laughs> Need a nap before I wake up. I ain't gonna be shit if I don't get this nap. <laughs> I know I'm getting older. My body tells me things. My body told me I need to settle down. Yeah, and it tells you the roughest way. I went in the bathroom, looked in the mirror, and my hairline, you see this shit up here? I looked in the mirror, my hairline was like, you know I'm about to get out of here, man. <laughs> stop crying, stop crying. We had some good times together, we had some good times. Stop crying. I'm about to slide on back. Be hanging out with the back of your hairline. Been on the same head all this time, I ain't never met him. Stop crying, we had some good times. You braided me, you faded me, we had some good times. <laughs> still be hanging around the sides. Come on, man, I'll be around, I'll be around. Hi, guys, I'm in such a good mood. I'm really excited, because actually my birthday's coming up. Um, I'm gonna be turning 34. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Reek and Don't Wrinkle. I, um, and that's my real age, because I actually did that. I was talking about that at a show I was at, and uh, some girls after the show were like, oh my God, I can't believe you say that. Oh my God, why would you say your age on stage? Oh my God. And I was like, because it doesn't stop the process. Do you guys know how this works? <laughs> Like me not saying it doesn't make it not happen. <laughs> and me lying about it would only catch up to me because I have girlfriends that lie about their age. You know, those girls that are like, 30's the new 20. <laughs> 40's the new 30. I'm like, no, it's that, no, it's that. <laughs> I know, I, what kind of math are you doing? Because <laughs> I don't see any 20 year olds walking around going, oh my God, I'm 10, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this new math is really confusing me. And there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. If you accept the beauty of getting older, there's nothing wrong with it at all. There's certain things that chicks do, I think, to kind of make it like easy for them. Like I have a girlfriend that's dating a younger guy and she's calling herself a cougar, which is awful. <laughs> I hate that because she walks around and she's like, I'm a cougar. <laughs> I'm like, you're an idiot. Stop talking. <laughs> Let me just explain to you. I don't judge you. If you're an older woman, you date a younger guy. Hey, that's good for you. Do what you have to do. I'm not, I don't run your life, but just don't liken yourself to a predatory animal. <laughs> How does that even sound appealing, ladies, that at some point you're gonna be so hard up for man meat <laughs> that you have to hunt it? And you gotta hunt the younger ones because their legs are weaker and they don't run as fast. Because <laughs> older guys can sense the crazy coming. They'll be like, is that Sharon? My knee's acting up. <laughs> I just got hit on by a 19-year-old. No, no, it wasn't sexy. <laughs> Stop. Let me explain how it happened. I was on the subway. All my fun stories happen on the subway. And this guy, I, you know, he was approaching me. He's all thugged out, like baggy pants, baggy shirt, like a fitted cap, all thugged out. And I could see him out of the corner of my eye, like approaching me. Like, you know how you notice when somebody, you can feel when someone's gonna hit on you, right? It's like, I was like, dan it, dan it, dan it. I could feel that happening. Like, the closer he got to me, I was like, no. And I have to give him credit because he approached me with like the swagger of like a grown man. Like he was like, I'm saying, ma, let me get your phone number. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no. And he goes, why come I can't get your number? Well, let's break down that sentence, first of all. That's your first clue. <laughs> so I told him, I said, you know, I think I'm too old for you. And he said, well, how old are you? And I said, I'm 33. And you could see the damn in his face. <laughs> like, that was the oldest age he heard up until that point in his life. Like, he couldn't fathom how I'd made it 33 years on this earth. And then he tried to make it better. He's like, I'm saying you don't look 33, ma. <laughs> and I was like, well, thank you, but should I have like a hump and a lazy eye to help you out? Like next time he sees a girl with a hump, oh, she 33. <laughs> That's when they get their hump. As a kid, I thought I was gonna be vanquishing evil and protecting the innocent, like a, in this position. You know what I mean? With like a girl over my shoulder, I rescued in a teddy and a machine gun. She's like, oh, I'm scared. I'm like, calm down. You know, you know what I mean? Like I'm wet. I don't know why. And I just, I bust through a window. I just want to, hey, gay. You know, my shirt's ripped, obviously, because if you're a badass, your shirt's always ripped because you get in fights. Guys cut you like, what the, why? And you know, and then, and girls are like, they get overcome with lust. Like, I can't wait. And they'd rip your shirt. And you got to have a huge shirt budget is the point I'm making. <laughs> But I'm not, it, the bummer is I'm not, you get it to be an adult and you realize I'm not built for that kind of, I don't know if with a woman and a machine gun, I don't know if I could even get air. I don't, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know if I had that bone structure. That's what kills me. I didn't grow into the guy I wanted to be. I'm not built for, you know, heroics. I'm, I'm built for dance. Look at this shit. I, can't, like I, I'm serious. Like I'm a, I know. I've never taken, I've never taken dance. I can do four of those. I'm, I'm just a natural. I can, 
I'm, it sucks. I, I don't like it. I've always wanted to be really muscular. I lift weights. I overeat. I just stay narrow and supple. I'm built. Look at the humanity in my eyes. And I, I'm too old to have little ones, man. I'm 46 with a six-year-old and a one-year-old, man. It's kicking the shit out of me, man. Oh, yeah. Like, here's a sign I'm getting old. This really happened recently. I, I'm watching porn on the internet. I'm not that old. You know, I wasn't watching it on a VHS tape. But I did live through those days. Remember when you had to go to like a, a West Coast video or something and had like, a, had like a porn room off to the right, right? And you, had, you were embarrassed to go in that porn room. So you had to look around, you had to make a right and a quick left. And then you were in, you're like, oh, I'm in, I'm in. I'm in. Right? It's like six married guys on a knee pulling boxes out. <laughs> now this is how old I am. I'm watching porn on the internet recently. This comes out of my mouth. I go, whoa, that is a really nice couch. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV with the best of season three, Topic Thunder. Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live, the best of season three, Topic Thunder. That's it. Thanks for watching Best of Gotham Comedy Live, Topic Thunder. As always, stay tuned for more hilarious comedians coming to you live at the Gotham Comedy Club on Access TV. Until then, see you next time.